Welcome to Higher Ground, a residential treatment facility just for women. When you're ready to claim the power that is rightfully yours, you're ready for Higher Ground. We are located in a beautiful valley beneath the Owyhee Mountains in Caldwell, Idaho, on 52 acres of verdant farmland. This breathtaking setting is the backdrop for your powerful transformation. Now I would like to introduce you to Jamie and Marla Keller, our Family Program Directors. Prior to writing the letters, I felt very angry, confused, and I didn't really know why I was being frustrated or getting mad about very small things. Um, after finishing them, I feel happier, I feel more complete, um, I feel relinquished, and I'm very excited about where, where my life is headed after, after being done with the process. Before I did the letter process, I often would use my anger and frustration in unhealthy ways. Uh, I would practically coddle those emotions and any reason I had in a relationship of deeper intimacy, I would pull it out when it was convenient. Uh, after doing the letter process, I now express my emotions in a healthy and clear way, at least healthier and clearer way, and I have this weight lifted off my shoulders and this intense feeling of freedom and um, excitement for the depth that I can now gain in all my relationships in my life. Hi, I'm Marla. I am a co-director of the family program here at Higher Ground. I'm so excited for your journey. I just want to do a few little teaching things before we get started into the letter process. One of the most important things that Jamie and I really have discovered in our own journey is that control and abandonment play such a huge role in our lives. Um, in my life, I would have to say that I was the controller and he was the abandoner. And I, it wasn't until we'd been married for quite a while, back in 1998, that I read a book about control. And I went to Jamie and I said, you know what, honey, I might have issues with control. And he didn't laugh at me. He didn't uh, run away. He didn't grab me and say, yay. Uh, he was very kind about it. And what I discovered through that is that my deep desire for approval and perfection caused me to desperately try and control everything around me. And in that desperately trying to control everything around me, in trying to grasp especially onto Jamie and control him, I found that he would like to run away. It didn't mean that he physically ran away. It didn't mean that he abandoned me by physically leaving, although that did happen once in a while. It meant that I would say, I need this from you, or I'm right about this, and he would say, okay, and he'd shut down, and he'd go away somewhere behind his wall. Or he'd say, I need to go and take a bike ride with my brother. And I'd say, you're gonna leave me here with the kids and how can you do that to me? And why are you leaving me? And I try to control him more and he'd run away. So this control abandonment cycle is very, very uh, prevalent in almost every relationship. And it, when I fear, just fearing that Jamie's going to control me or abandon me, I will abandon or control. So my fear of Jamie leaving me caused me to try to control him and keep him where it was safe and where I knew he was there. Control abandonment cycle is kind of like uh, third grade. The boy runs, he hits the girl. She runs away and he chases after her and she gets tired and she stops. And he gets tired and he stops and she looks over and he's not chasing anymore. And so she chases back after him. And it's that, I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna run away. I'm gonna come and find you. It's the come here, go away, come here, go away. And I think we can all relate to that. The core 
uh, abuse that we all have suffered in our lives is rejection. And out of rejection comes this desperate fear that I am going to be controlled or I'm going to be abandoned. And we all have it. So it's super important to understand this so that when we are writing the letters that you're going to be writing, you can go to the absolute core of the feeling wheel where there's control and abandonment and decide what in my life, is it control, fear, abandonment that, it, that I'm fearing or hurting about? that I have pain about, or is it something else, something outside of that? And then when I look outside of the feeling wheel and I search down into the center, you'll notice that at, at the, there's a center of the feeling wheel and you can go out into the spokes. And I can go to the center of the feeling wheel and say, okay, I felt abandoned. What are the offshoots? Or I can go and say, oh, I felt shame. Oh, that's fear of being abandoned, rejected. Feeling was a really important tool, and so I'm excited for you to start using this tool so that you can really begin to understand what you're feeling. When you come to Higher Ground for Family Weekend, you'll be able to express your truth because you'll have learned to forgive, move through your feelings, look, touch those feelings, move through them, share them, share your truth, and then have clear boundaries with your loved one that's here at higher ground and have boundaries in your own life, in your own self. So I am excited about this journey. Thank you for joining us on this journey and we will see you soon at Family Weekend. Latest research indicates that emotional memory begins at conception. A baby in the womb is strongly affected by her mother and all the people in the mother's life, but especially the father, whether he be present or absent. 50% of what we learn happens in the first two years of life, and then 90% within the first seven years. And during this time, there's always something that goes on, some agreement that we make, some lie that we believe, that results in a conflict. The purpose of these simple forgiveness letters is to resolve these conflicts and to allow us to be more present. Sometimes, we do not feel a need to write the letters. You may be asking, why do I need to do this? Well, it's so that you can be prepared for the family weekend that you've been invited to. You're, getting, you're looking at this video because someone has invited you to be an important part of their process. And as such, we want to prepare you so that you can get the most out of your weekend. Ultimately, forgiveness gives us clarity in our truth. And the truth leads us to a healthy boundaries in our relationships. So while the info has been, while this info has been thoroughly researched and focused to the most important skills, the magic, if you will, of the process here at Higher Ground is how each person is able to integrate the skills into daily use. So your forgiveness letters and your journal are vital at this point. So thank you for your participation. Here at Higher Ground, we use the feeling wheel to help us express our feelings and our expression of feelings we want to do this in a healthy way oftentimes I know in my life when I would get angry it would be because I just everything was piled up and it was up to here and I wanted to just bleh and be angry <laughs> so the expression you're going to learn through the letter process is a healthy expression we're more able to express our feelings healthily we then can get our needs met more effectively and more in a peaceful, um, contented manner. Uh, we recommend that you get a yellow pad of paper and that you get also a red pen. There's something about red and yellow. There's McDonald's, there's Shell, something about it. And there's something that it does to your subconscious that helps you to release the things that you're writing out on your pad. So, so if you can, Get a yellow pad and a red pen to write the letters. And you're gonna write the letters in the format that I will show you. Uh, we're gonna show you on the screen and I'm also going to teach that to you as we move through it. This letter back is not what you think that they're going to say to you because you hear that voice in your head. This is as if they're whole and healthy and they can tell you everything that you need to hear. Forgiveness, remember, is for you. 
It does not make the abuse that you experienced or the hurt that you experienced okay. It's the beginning of letting it go and um, letting it go allows you to find freedom from the hurts that you've experienced in your life and it's such a powerful freedom. And so it's important to remember that in writing my letters, I'm releasing. I'm releasing so that I can receive the love and the con connection and the intimacy that I've always desired in my life. We start the process of this letter writing with fathers. The reason we start with fathers is because fathers tend to be a little bit more concrete than other people in our lives. So we're starting the process with our fathers. Um, our parents are our first example of how we are going to relate in our relationships, all of our relationships, but, but particularly our relationships with a significant other. Uh, in writing this letter to your father, it, this is going to help you prepare your skills uh, so that as we teach you more things and you start writing your letters to other people, you're going to be more secure in how you're doing that. And it's important to remember that even if we don't think that we have anything to forgive our father for, there's always something there that's that, and it could be as simple as, and this is not simple, it can be very painful, it can be as if maybe your father has passed away and you feel like you had a lot of clarity with him before he passed away and so you don't need to write the letters. The reality is that when someone passes away, it's a really big abandonment in our lives. They don't choose to die, but in death we feel abandoned and so that can be, dear dad, when this happened and I'll get there, I felt abandoned. So remember that. We're going to make sure that you write all of the fathers in your life. If, you have, if you're adopted, we want you to write your biological father. If you have step fathers, we want you to write to them and of course the father that was your father in your life. It's important to forgive the father for these feelings that are created in just growing up. Um, regardless of, of what's happened in our past, uh, even if we feel like there's nothing there, we need to be very sure that we've cleaned all that up before we can have true intimacy and connection with the people that we love in our lives. So here is the overview for the format. And we're starting with dad, so I'm going to use dad in this uh, example. The format is, dear dad, and if I were writing to my father, this is what I would say. Dear Dad, what I miss about you is the times that we spent together hanging out, mostly Saturday afternoon and then on Sunday watching football. What I don't miss about you are the times that you said to me, uh, you look really pretty, too bad you have a big butt like your mom. That felt sad. When you did those things, when you told me that, I felt abandoned rejected and unworthy, like I was never going to be good enough. I choose to forgive you now. I regret I never told you how important those times were that we spent together. I appreciate you when we get together today now and your growth has been amazing and mine has too and you're able to say to me, I love you. I'm so proud of the beautiful woman that you are. I love you, Dad, Marla. In the times where you go, when you, I felt, it's important to put three core feelings. So when you abandoned me through work, I mean, it's funny how we as kids, when our dads usually go off to work, they, we have this sense of abandonment because with my dad particularly, he was getting his job done. He did the things that needed to be done to pay for the bills and do all those things. But I felt abandoned inside of that. And so an example of, of the when you I felt is when you abandoned me through going to work, I felt lonely and sad and um, there was a little bit for me, there was a little bit of shame as if I wasn't enough. So remember to put three core feelings from the feeling wheel 
in that section. And in that section as well, it's, e it's best to do broad, stro broad strokes. When you abandon me is a broad stroke. We don't need to put all the details about what happened. That's not the important thing. The feelings are important. Your story is very important to us, but it's the feelings that we want you to get to so that you can get the core out. Now it's time for the letter back. The letter back is really important. This is the uh, magic sauce of the process. The letter back is from your dad in this case, as if he's whole and healthy and can tell you everything that you need to hear. Not what you make up in your head, but everything that you need to hear from him. Follow the format closely because that's the important part of this process. The letter two is really good. A lot of people do letters of forgiveness. It's the letter back that's unique to our family program here. This is the format. Dear Marla, I'm gonna use myself as an example so it's easier. Dear Marla, I am sorry for saying to you that your butt was big. I was wrong. If I could have, I would have told you how much I loved you and how beautiful you are to make it right. Thank you for forgiving me. I am so proud of the woman of beauty and intuition that you are. Now, if you're a dude, you're going to write the very end will be, I am so proud of the man of strength and humility and integrity that you are. There's something very magical about hearing from our fathers that they are proud of us. So we remember to put that in. That's an important piece to the letter back. With this, what you're doing is, remember the subconscious conversation with the memory swirl. That memory swirl with all the glitches in our subconscious, in the software of our brain, we are taking those glitches and we're smoothing them out. We're telling the subconscious, it's okay. So it's as if you have all these papers hanging around this room and they're hitting me in the face and they hurt. We're taking those papers about dad and we're making them neat. We're putting them in a file and we're filing them away. We know that these things happen with our father, but they don't have the power over us that they used to have. That's the beauty of the process. The pain will diminish as time goes on. And I want to tell you too, something important is that this letter process is the layers of the onion. In four months, you may need to write another letter to your dad and another letter back. This is your process. We're teaching you this now to do this, to prepare for the family weekend, but this is a lifelong process. The the letters and the journaling you can take with you forever so that you don't ever have to hold on to resentments in your heart for anybody. I'm so excited about this journey. Thank you for embarking on it with us. Now's the time to write your letters to all the fathers or father figures in your life. It is really important that we focus on the feelings and not so much the story, especially including the sentence, I choose to forgive you now. As soon as you're done writing these letters, you can log in to higherground.com or call and set up your next appointment with our available coaches. To understand, the issues with mother, take a look at this diagram. This is the sexual emotional loop. If our parents had had a perfect relationship, this diagram would demonstrate how they connected emotionally and sexually. When emotions are expressed healthfully and consistently, the sexual connection comes naturally and feels balanced by both partners. There is honesty and safety. Unfortunately, this is rarely the case. The latest research indicates that less than 12% of married or committed couples have satisfaction in this area. This is generally because there has been a breakdown in emotional connection between our parents. In this illustration, we used percentages just to help us make our point. Men being 10, between 10 and 30% of the emotional loop and while the female partner is making up 70 to 90%. But even that 
smaller percentage is difficult for most men. Because many reasons, men, most men, do not know how to have a consistent, healthy expression of their emotions with their partners. Now, I'm not being hard on men. There are some very healthy men out there, and we're very happy for, to have them. But for the point of the illustration, we all have breakdowns in our life, and this is one way we can understand it. This difficulty that men sometimes have expressing their emotions breaks the loop interrupting the healthy system that leads to dysfunctional and unsatisfying sexual connection. In this frustrated state, what usually happens is both partners end up frustrated and along comes Junior. Now, we're not blaming anybody here. This is just what happens. No one person is more responsible. I'm not being harder on fathers than I am on mothers. But a father, when a father is checked out and the mother needs an emotional connection, whether the baby is male or female, the mother shifts her emotional connection onto the child. The results are this emotional burden for the child is most evident in teenage boys. So we use boys as the illustration, but also similar problems happen with girls. With the extra burden of the mother's emotional bonding, the boy ends up seeking out pornography, masturbation, and if possible, a series of sexual partners that lack a full emotional connection. Because, you guessed it, because the emotional connection is with the mother. To be clear, we are not blaming parents, okay? This is not a blame game. This is just the, the state of our culture as it is today. Parents do the best that they can, and if you were them, you would be doing exactly what they did. That is because you would be them, right? It's not, be, not how I would do it, it's how I would do it if I was you, but if I was you, I would be you and do it exactly like you did it. So we don't blame. We don't know the problems that our parents faced. So, there's a, so this is a result of generations of dysfunctional bonding. This leads to shame and confusion. If you take a look at the feeling wheel on your screen, you will see ashamed is at the 10 o'clock position and confused is at the 2 o'clock position. As you get more familiar with this feeling wheel, you'll see that there's a connection between the feelings both up and down and left and right on the wheel. So shame and confusion are like sisters on the wheel. Sexual shame leads to confusion, making it difficult to identify my feelings. By choosing to forgive whatever hurts you have with your mother, even if this illustration has not been helpful for you, just go through the letter process. You will begin to identify feelings more clearly and more importantly in time to ex identify those feelings in time to express them in the moment, giving you the power of healthy boundaries. If you look, take a look at the feeling wheel, when you have anger, it's based on fear because of a past rejection. We choose forgiveness in order to move to love, which gives us power. So we exchange fear for power in our relationships. So as we approach the mother letter, remember that mothers in our culture are kind of untouchable. Um, mother Mary, you know, she's kind of big and important and it's hard to, to make her wrong. Um, the traditional view of a mother-in-law is often um, somewhat negative. And so um, we, we want to just wash away these biases we may have and just simply write the letter. The letter writing process is designed so that you can get to the core issues the fastest way possible. So the letter process goes like this. Dear Mom, what I miss about you is fill in the blank. What I don't miss about you is fill in the blank. When you put a situation in that you can remember, I felt put three feelings off the wheel. And you might have two or three of when you, I felt, but no more than three. Then I choose to forgive you now. What I appreciate about you is 
fill in the blank. And I regret I never told you. And then a personal close. That's just how simple it is. Now, a really important part of the process is the letter back from mom to you. Now, it's really important that you realize that this would be as if she was whole and healthy. Not what she would actually say, but what you need to hear. So this is important that you, you think about what you need to hear and you put it down in this format. Dear you, put your name in. I am sorry for fill in the blank. I was wrong for fill in the blank. If I could have, I would have done whatever you needed to hear, do, see in your life, fill in the blank, to make it right. Thank you for forgiving me. I am proud of the man of strength, humility, and integrity that you are for men, or I am proud of the woman of beauty humility and intuition that you are. I love you, Mom. Now it's time to take a moment and write the letters to the mother in your life or mother figure in your life. It is important that we focus on the feelings and not so much the story. And remember to include the sentence, I choose to forgive you now. As soon as you're done writing these letters to the mother figure and back, you're going to go ahead and log on to higherground.com or call us and set up your next appointment with our available coaches. Now is the time for your letter to the loved one that is attending the Higher Ground program. No matter how this person is related to you, we want you to write the letter. And so, if this person is your parent, you'll be writing to this person, Dear Mom. If this person is your daughter, you'll be writing, Dear Daughter. If this person is your spouse or your significant other, you'll be writing it to this letter to them as, the, obviously, your significant other. It's important that you write the, the letter to as well as the letter back. And the letter back, the second letter, um, you might want to be able to put specifics um, in that better than you could have before because you've already written those other letters and you understand the process a little bit better. If you're writing this letter to your spouse or significant other, it's important to remember that we have the key to each other's heart. That's why you were drawn together. On the other side of that key, visualize a key, one of those old timey keys. Here's the key on this side. On the other side of the key is a dagger. We have the key to each other's heart, but oftentimes we don't know how to use the key and so we flip it over and we use the dagger and sometimes we use the dagger intentionally. You are also within five points of IQ with your significant other, usually, that's what statistics tell us, and you have matching emotional issues. This may be hard to hear. Uh, the issues aren't the exact same, they just match. It's this, there's, it's a horrible saying, but the saying is, the holes in her head fit the rocks in his head. I don't know, I don't like that one very well, but it does work in this situation. It worked with Jamie and I. We had matching things that we would pull the dagger out and stab each other. These issues are primarily developed in your childhood, um, where the pain of those daggers from relationships with parents, siblings, teachers, friends, the daggers are pulled out and we get stabbed and those daggers are left in our heart. And so when we come up against each other, when Jamie and I, with our dagger sticking out, we'd bump up against each other and I'd say, you just hurt me. And he'd say, no, I didn't. And actually the dagger was from a long time ago. And so this healing work helps the daggers to be removed and allows us as significant others, as partners, to use the key to each other's heart instead of the dagger. And this is, this is really using the key is, is the key to happiness and intimacy and connection. Remember that very important that your feelings are real, that your partner's feelings are real. 
Your feelings are your responsibility. Their feelings are their responsibility. To express healthily, it is important to understand the control abandonment loop that we talked about earlier. If you need to review that, go ahead and do that. The control abandonment loop is something that we see, remember, on the playground. And so we want to stop using this control abandonment cycle as if we're nine years old. Because oftentimes, Jamie and I realized in our relationship, we had arrested development and because of the pain of our past, and we would react to each other as if we were children. Sometimes three, sometimes seven, sometimes nine, sometimes in our teens. As we move through our healing, we grew up. We've been growing up. We're still growing up. Um, doesn't mean you can't be childlike and have fun. It just means that you're growing up and you're connecting with your significant, significant other in a better way. So it's not, remember, being controlled or being abandoned that you react to. It can be simply the fear of being controlled or abandoned. So when a situation feels like it did when you were hurt back in the past, your amygdala response, that's the tiny little almond shaped thing in the middle of your brain right here, your amygdala response says, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna freeze, or I'm gonna run away. And so you're hit with this pain and you wanna lash out. And that's your amygdala response. If you take just 10 seconds to think about it, you generally won't be lashing out because you get to your more logical place. So your amygdala, the new research shows that your, your amygdala used to be that that was where everything stemmed from. But now we're discovering in heart math that we're, something affects us from out here our heart response sends a message to the amygdala saying there's something wrong here, there's something going on here, and then you react. Um, oftentimes that's why we feel crazy in relationships. Um, we have a book called How Men Make Women Crazy and Vice Versa, remember that? And with, that's because when our amygdala responds to something that Jamie is saying to me, I am going to say, this is, I, I don't feel comfortable about this. It's kind of the intuition coming up. I don't feel comfortable about the situation. And he says, oh, don't be silly, baby. You're just being crazy. Important phrase to look at. Remember that. Forgiveness is the key that moves us from the top of the feeling wheel. Remember the feeling wheel. And if you have that in front of you, look at it. From the top of the feeling wheel, through rejection, through forgiveness, down into the bottom of the wheel where there's center, the center of that wheel is love. Forgiveness brings us to our feelings. Expressing our feelings allows us to come to our truth and truth defines our boundaries. Boundaries are difficult because they're really a matter of will than they are of words. So when you move through forgiveness and you have your truth and you express that, you're able to have clearer boundaries. When you come to the family weekend, you'll be able to speak your truth more clearly and have good boundaries with your loved one here, and they will have good boundaries with you. And remember, this is an important place for us to be in humility, knowing that um, our loved one needs us to be standing in this space of forgiveness, truth, boundaries, and humility. This letter is for you to read to one of the coaches at Higher Ground and then destroy. It is not for you to share with the family member right now. This is going to help you as you move through this letter. It's going to help you to express yourself as you truly desire to be heard when you get to see your loved one in person. And so when you join us at the family program weekend, you will again be able to express your truth in love and humility and have good boundaries with your loved one. Now it's time for you to write the letter to your loved one here at Higher Ground. It's always important to focus on your feelings and not so much the story and always include the sentence, I choose to forgive you now. Go ahead and give us a call and this will be your last appointment with our coaches here at Higher Ground.